To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Right, children. Even in this chapter, we are going to learn about more forms of energy. So, do you remember when in the previous chapters we learn about different types of or different forms of energy and how we can use them in our day-to-day -day lives too? And further, we learn about energy transformation as well. So, which means one form of energy always converts to another form of energy when we use them, right? So, here we are going to start with heat energy. Another name for heat energy is thermal energy. Right children? So look at this one. What do you feel when you bring your hand close to a flame? What you feel is the heat energy. So without touching the flame, if we just bring our hand closer to a flame where there is fire, you will feel the heat energy. Right? The warmth of the environment you can feel that is the heat energy. Right, children? So, heat is a form of energy which is very important in doing various types of work like cooking food. What are the other instances we need to use heat energy, children? You all know in order to iron clothes, we need the heat energy. Right? To heat water, to boil water, we need to use heat energy. Right, children? So, in the electricity lesson, we learn that even using heat energy, we can generate electricity. So even this chapter, we are going to learn about it further. Right, children? So let's see what we have to do in uh, this topic, children. Right, we have an activity to do, understanding more about heat energy. So to do this activity, we need an empty glass bottle, a basin with hot water. So in the lab, I'm going to use a beaker right and we need a balloon okay right let's write an empty glass bottle a basin with or a beaker with hot water And a balloon. Right, children? We'll see how to do this activity. So, the method fix the balloon to the empty bottle. Right? Take hot water to the vessel and dip the bottle in it slowly. Shall we draw the diagram for these children? So, I can draw the bottle like this. And you need to fix a balloon to the mouth of the bottle. Right? And then Take hot water to the vessel and dip the bottle in it slowly. Now this bottle is empty but its mouth is covered with a balloon. And you have to slowly immerse this in the hot water basin or the beaker. Right. So whenever you draw a diagram, make sure you label it, right? Let's label this. This is the balloon, empty glass bottle, beaker or a basin, hot water. Balloon, 
empty glass bottle Or a beaker and hot water. So you all can do this activity as well at home very easily. Right? Because all these things you can find easily children. Right? So fix the balloon to the empty bottle. Take hot water to the vessel and dip the bottle in it slowly. Right? Note down the observations. Discuss the reasons for the observations. We will do this activity now. Right children? We are going to do this activity to prove that work can be done using thermal energy or heat energy. So look what I have here. Here I have a large beaker and here I have an empty bottle and you all can see I have fixed this balloon to the mouth of the bottle. So what do I have to do now? I am going to pour some hot water onto this beaker. And now I am going to immerse this bottle with the balloon in this hot water beaker. Observe carefully what happens, children. You all can see this balloon inflates slowly. So you all can see this balloon slowly inflates. What is the reason children? You all know that even though this bottle looks like it's empty, it is filled with air. So when we immerse this empty water bottle or the bottle with air in this hot water, what happens children? This air inside the bottle gets heated up and this air expands. So what happens during expansion? The volume of the air increases. So when the volume of the air increases, the increased amount of air goes out of the bottle and as the mouth of the bottle is covered with the balloon, that increased volume of air gets filled inside the balloon and the balloon inflates. Okay children, so inflating a balloon is a type of work. How did we do this work children? Because of heat or because of thermal energy. So when we provide this heat energy to this bottle, the air inside the bottle uh, expands and the volume increases and because of the increase of the volume, the balloon gets inflated. Right children. So you all observed what happened. What did we do again? We fixed the balloon to the mouth of the empty glass bottle and we immersed it in a hot water vessel. So what did you all observe children? There you observe that the balloon inflates. What is the reason for this? I explained you all there as well. Here the thing is, even though the glass bottle looks empty, it is filled with air. So we can't see air, but still the bottle is filled with air. So when you immerse this glass bottle in hot water, what happens children? The air particles absorb the heat of the water. So remember, when air absorbs heat, what happens children? Air expands or the volume of the air increases. Now even if the volume increases and if, even if the air expands, because this bottle is covered with the balloon, there is no other place for this air to go other than inside the balloon. So the increased amount of air go inside the balloon and because of that, the balloon inflates. Right children? So what is the conclusion after doing this activity? So you all know inflating the balloon is a type of work. How did we do this work? Due to heat. 
Just imagine if we immerse this bottle in cold water, we won't be able to observe this one, right? So in order to inflate the balloon, we have to immerse this bottle in hot water. So the air inside the bottle will absorb heat. The air expands then. Expansion of air means the volume of the air increases. So then what happens when the volume increases? The increased amount of volume will go into the balloon, making the balloon inflate. Right children? Therefore, this work is done by heat or the thermal energy. So it's very clear that heat has a certain type of energy to do work. Right? Let's write this observation. When the bottle with the balloon is immersed in hot water, hot water. The balloon inflates. Right children? When the bottle with the balloon is immersed in hot water, the balloon inflates. So what is the conclusion? The balloon inflates due to Expansion of air. We can write the volume of the air is increased. The air in the bottle expands due to absorption of heat. Here we will write inflation of the balloon is a work. Right? It needs energy. Right? Or we will write in a different way. Balloon needs energy. The eye in the bottle expands due to absorption of heat. Therefore, the work is done. With the help of heat. Therefore, heat has energy. that can be used to do work. 
right? Inflation of the balloon needs energy. The balloon inflates due to expansion of air. The volume of the air is increased. Now remember about expansion we have done in grade 6. So you should remember this one. Okay. So we are going to learn more about this heat and expansion in lesson 14 as well. Right. So the air in the bottle expands due to absorption of heat. Therefore, the work is done with the help of with the help of absorption is done with the right. Therefore, the work is done with the help of heat. Therefore, heat has energy that can be used to do work, right? Because of the energy contained in heat, we can do this work. Right, children? We'll move on to the next. Right. We have another activity to do. Finding out whether work can be done by heat energy. So, even in the previous activity, we already proved this one, right? Using heat energy, we can do work, okay? So, we are going to study it further in this activity too. So, what are the things we need to do this activity? We need a candle, a PVC pipe and we need a piece of paper and a boiling tube with water in it and we need a test tube holder. So, in order to, uh, we need to heat this boiling tube with water so we can't hold it with our hands. Our hands will burn, therefore we are going to hold it with the test tube holder, right? And we need a pair of crucible tongs, right? So to uh, hold the hot surfaces or the hot objects, we can use this one, okay? We will write the candle. PVC pipe, piece of paper, a boiling tube with water. Boiling tube with water. Test tube holder, and a pair of right children, a candle, a PVC pipe, a piece of paper a boiling tube with water, a test tube holder and a pair of crucible tongs. How to do this activity? Even this activity you can easily do, right? The method, we have to light the candle. Hold the piece of paper to the flame of the candle. Observe what happens. You all know it's going to burn, right? Burning something is known as combustion, right? Heat and fold the PVC tube. So you have to First check whether you can fold the PVC tube, you won't be able to do that. Then what you can do is, you have to take one part of the PVC pipe or the PVC tube. Let's say if this is the PVC tube and then you have to hold it over a flame. Just one place you have to hold over the flame of the candle and then you will realize that part becomes very soft and then you will you can fold it from that particular place right children so hold the piece of paper to the flame of the candle observe what happens heat and fold the pvc tube right heat the boiling tube with water so 
you are going to hold the boiling tube with water using the test tube hold and you are going to hold it against the flame and check what happens right and note down the observations of each instance we will do this activity now right children we are going to do this activity to check what are the things that can be done by heat okay so look what i have here here i have a candle first of all i am going to light a candle right So when I light this candle, observe carefully. Now candle is a solid. It's made with solid wax. Okay. Observe carefully what happens. Now you must have seen this before. When we light a candle, what happens? Because of the heat, what happens children? The candle melts. Okay. You all can see solid turns into its liquid. Right. Observe carefully children, if you observe this side, you all can see the liquid wax present, which means when we light the candle, it is melting, right? Look children, can you all see, if you observe this side, you can clearly see that candle is melting, okay? So why did this happen earlier when we did not light the candle it was all solid but after we light the candle what happens children it starts melting this happens because of the heat okay so melting is one thing that happens because of heat understand children right now here I have some pieces of paper I'm going to light this spirit lamp And then I'm going to hold these pieces of paper onto the flame, right? What happens children? These tiny pieces of paper burn, right? Right. So what happened children? Now this is completely different from the previous form of paper. Right? So what happened children? Because of heat, these pieces of paper burn. Right? So burning is another thing that takes place, another change that takes place because of heat. You all can see now what is remaining is some ash. Okay? Right. Right. Look at this one children, this is a PVC pipe. Even though I try to bend this one, it is difficult. Okay, I cannot bend this easily, right? Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hold this middle part over the flame. Right, now you all can see clearly, it changed its shape. Right, earlier it was like a tube. Now it changed its shape because when I held it over a flame, what happened children? This PVC pipe's shape changed. So now I can easily bend this PVC pipe. Now what happened earlier, the PVC pipe was all tubular and I couldn't even bend it. Now after holding onto a flame, it changed its shape. This is known as deformation, right? It's normal structure change because of heat. Okay, children, so deformation is another thing that takes place because of heat. Right, children? Now what I'm going to do is, now this is a boiling tube. I'm going to pour some water onto the boiling tube and I'm going to heat it up. Now this activity also you all have done before and you are very familiar with these type of activities, right? So remember when we heat something using a flame, 
you are not going to touch this type of boiling tubes with your hands you have to use this type of test tube holders okay right So what happens when I heat this up? The water absorbs heat. Right children? Right children, now observe carefully. You all can see the water starting to boil now. Right? That is because of the absorption of heat. Now you all know that when solid substances absorb heat, what happens? It turns into its liquid. That is what happened earlier when I uh, provided heat to this uh, candle. What happened? It melted. Solid turns into its liquid. Now this is liquid water. So when I heat the liquid water, what happens? Now if you observe carefully, you all can see the steam goes out. Right? Steam means water vapor. Observe carefully. You can clearly see the steam goes out and at the same time look inside the boiling tube. You all can see the water is boiling. Right children? So boiling is another uh, thing that takes place because of heat. Right children? So after doing this activity, I hope it's clear that because of heat there are different things happen. There are different changes take place. So here we learn about melting, burning, deformation and boiling. Right children. So you observe what happened. Those all, the, all those steps we took were very simple steps. And even at home you can try to do these type of simple activities with heat. Right. So what were the observations? What was the first thing we did? Light the candle. So you all observe when you light the candle. What happens children? It started to melt. So the melting of substance which means now here the solid candle or the solid wax turns into liquid wax. The candle is made with wax so when we provide heat what happens? The solid wax turns into liquid wax. So which means change of state takes place. You all know that there are three states of matter. What are they? Solids, liquids and gases. Here due to heat solids turns into its liquid and this is known as melting right but we will write it first observation due to heat due to heat what is the first thing happen the wax the candle is made of wax right the wax started to melt started to melt. So we can consider this as change of state of matter. Change of states. Right, that was the first one. Then hold the piece of paper to the flame of the candle. What happened to the piece of paper? It burned. Right, the piece of paper burned. And then heat and fold the PVC tube. What happened to the shape of this PVC tube because of the heat children? So when we provided heat to a particular place, its shape changes. Because of the change of the nature, we can fold it. So the change of this shape or change of this nature is known as deformation. Right? And then heat the boiling tube with water. So what happened children? When we provided heat to the water, it started to boil and smokes also came out. We could see that. So which means evaporation takes place. Right? The water evaporates. We will write due to heat, the wax started to melt, the piece of paper, The piece of paper 
Sun. Right? Shape of the PVC pipe changed. It's known as deformation. And the water started to boil. It's known as evaporation. Right, children? So due to heat, the wax started to melt or change of states. The piece of paper burned. The shape of the PVC pipe changed or deformation. The water started to boil, evaporation. Right, children? So all these changes took place because of heat. So all these things can be considered as type of work. So this work was done by heat. All these changes took place because of heat. All this work was done by heat. Therefore, heat must have a type of energy in order to do work. Because now we know in order to do, do work, there must be energy. Without energy, we can't do work. So this work was done by heat. Therefore, heat has energy. Right? Let's write. The above work were done by heat. Therefore, heat has It has a type of energy. Right? The above work were done by heat. Therefore, heat has a type of energy and this is known as heat energy or thermal energy. Right? We'll move on to the next. Right. We have another activity to do. Making a steam turbine. Right? So, what are the things we need? Let's write. We need a small tin can. Small tin can, and we need a piece of aluminium sheet. Piece of aluminium sheet, and we need a cork stopper. And then we need a thick piece of wire. Thick piece of wire. And then we need a tripod and a Bunsen burner. Bunsen burner. Right, children? A small tin can, a piece of aluminium sheet, a cork stopper, a thick piece of wire, a tripod and a Bunsen burner. Let's see how to do this. Right. So look at the setup. You have to make the setup like this. While going through this one, we will label the diagram. Bore a small hole in the middle of the tin, lid of the tin can. So you all can see now here, this is the small hole. Make sure it shouldn't be too big, right? So this is the small hole. Small hole. And this is the tin can. Tin can, right? 
put a small amount of water into the can and close the lid. Right? Make a turbine fixing pieces of aluminium blades to the cork stopper. So you have to take small pieces of the aluminium sheet and you have to uh, insert it into the cork stopper and you have to make a small turbine. This is the turbine. Right? And using the pieces of thick wire, hold the turbine above the hole of the tin can like this. Using the thick wire, you have to make a structure like this and you have to hold it above the above the small hole of the tin can. Right? Place the setup on the tripod and heat it using the burner. Okay, let's label the other parts as well. This is the turbine. Thick wire, tripod and the burner. Bunsen burner, tripod, thick wire, small turbine. Right children? So you have to make a small turbine with the aluminium sheet and the cork stopper and you have to fix it through this thick wire and so then you have to send this thick wire through that small turbine and you have to hold it over the tin can with the small hole. Right? And then what you have to do is you have to put some water to the tin can and you have to heat it using the Bunsen burn and you have to observe what happens. We will do this activity now. Right children, now we are going to study how a steam turbine works. Now look at the setup we have here. Now this is a small turbine. As I am going to rotate this turbine with the help of steam, I am going to call this a steam turbine. Right? Now what is this? This is a boiler. This is a copper boiler. So I have put water inside this. Right? So you all can see the water level from here. Right children? And what I am going to do is, I am going to heat this water using the Bunsen burner and when the water boils, steam will come out of this small tube. Right? So when I place this turbine near this tube, what will happen? Because of the speed of the steam, this turbine will rotate. Okay? Right. Let's light this up. Right. So observe carefully what happens children. So when the water starts boiling, you can observe it from this arm, okay? Right, now you all can see the bubbles from here, the water is boiling. You all can see the steam is coming out, okay? Look, now I am going to place this next to this tube. So did you observe what happened children? Because of the speed of the steam, what happens? The steam turbine mm. rotates. Now when we boil this water, you all know that even we use a larger vessel to boil this water, you all can see there is only a very tiny tube for the steam to come out. Because of this reason, the steam that comes out of this tiny tube is at high pressure. Because it's at high pressure, we can easily make this turbine rotate using the steam. So a similar function takes place in a thermal power plants children. So in a huge boilers like this, a large amount of water is heated and steam is produced at very high pressure. Right children? So that steam is used to rotate steam turbines and thereby to generate electricity. Right children? So you observed what happened children. 
So when we heat the small amount of water which is inside the tin with a small hole, what happens after a little while? We could observe that steam comes out of the small hole at high pressure, right, with high speed. And because of that steam, what happened, children? The small turbine started to rotate, right, children? So it's very clear that heat energy can be used to make a turbine work. How can we do that? Using the heat energy, we can boil water. When the water boils, steam comes out. So with that steam, we, we can rotate the turbine. Right, children? So a similar function takes place in thermal power plants. We are going to learn about that as well. Right? Let's write this observation. Steam comes out of the small hole of the tin can and due to this steam the turbine rotates. Right children? Steam comes out of the small hole of the tin can and due to this steam, the turbine rotates. Right? So what is the conclusion? Right, heat can be used to make a turbine work. So we can use heat energy to boil water. So when the water is boiled, what happens? Steam is produced. So when the uh, turbine is directed or the, when the steam is directed towards the turbine, what happens children? The turbine rotates. Okay children, we'll move on to the next. Right, look at these two diagrams. So these are thermal power plants. I told you all a similar function takes place in thermal power plants, right? So electricity is generated in thermal power stations by rotating dynamos connected to large turbines which are driven by steam, right? So most of these power plants, a dynamo is there in order to generate electricity. So in order to rotate the dynamo, we always use a rotating turbine. So the method of rotating the turbine is different from power plant to power plant. Okay, so sometimes we can use water to make the turbine work, right? And here in thermal power plants, in order to make the turbine work, steam is used. So how to produce steam? Water is heated and then steam is produced and the steam is directed towards the turbine and the turbine rotates. As the turbine is connected to the dynamo, then the dynamo also rotates and thereby you all know that when the dynamo rotates, electricity is generated, right? Look at this diagram. You all can see now this is water. So from this side, water is sent through this burner-like structure. You all can see the temperature is high there. So when water passes through this setup, the water gets heated up and water boils and therefore steam is produced. So the steam is directed towards the turbine from here. Therefore, the turbine rotates, right? You all can see the turbine is connected to this dynamo. So the dynamo generates electricity. So in thermal power plants, most of the time coal is used. So coal is burned. So heat energy is obtained. That heat energy is used to boil water and thereby to obtain steam. And that steam is sent through the uh, turbine and the turbine rotates. Right children? So look at this one. 
this is that type of large turbines with different number of blades. Okay, so these type of turbines are rotated with steam and thereby as the axis of these turbines are connected to the dynamo, the dynamo also rotates and can generate electricity. Right? We'll move on to the next one. Right. Write down the energy transformation that occurs in a thermal power plant. So heat energy is used to boil water and thereby what happens? The turbine rotates. So the heat energy is converted to kinetic energy. Anything moving contains kinetic energy. Because of the movement of the turbine, the dynamo also rotates and electricity is generated. Therefore, what is the basic energy transformation? It starts from the heat energy. So heat energy is converted to, first it's converted to kinetic energy. And then it's converted to electrical energy. Electrical energy. Right, children? So, due to heat energy, water is boiled and steam is produced. Because of the speed of the steam, the turbines can be rotated, which means that, that heat energy is converted to kinetic energy first. So, because of the movement of the turbine, electricity can be generated by the dynamo, which means using the kinetic energy, electrical energy is produced. So, in this way, it's very clear that when we use different types of energy in day-to-day -day lives, it keeps on transforming from one form to the other. Right, children? Right. So look at these pictures. It is heat energy that is responsible for occurring winds. Now even in grade 6 we have discussed about how wind is occurred. Do you remember that children? Let's see. Now when you consider the earth, you all know that the sunlight, because of the sunlight, the earth gets heated up. But remember children, different parts of the earth get heated up in different, at different levels, right? So let's say if this is the earth, so let's say because of the sunlight, this particular part gets heated up more than the other areas, right? So this part of the earth gets heated up more and more because of the sunlight, right? So in that case, so next to the ground, air is present. So the air also, this heat transmits to the air as well, right? So air particles also get heated up because, of, because this area's temperature is high, right? So because of the heat of the air, remember, the hot air becomes less heavy, which means the hot air becomes lighter. Where does the light air particles go, children? The light air particles go up, right? So the heated light air particles go up. Right children? So when the air gets heated up, it becomes lighter, less dense and the heated air particles go up. When the heated air particles go up, in the current area, an air depression is created which means the air pressure reduces. So remember, air always flows from where its pressure is higher to lower. So, in this area, air pressure is less than that of the surroundings. Therefore, air flows from the surroundings towards this area with less air pressure. So, this moving air is known as, what is the name given? Wind. So, this is how wind is formed. Okay, children. So, it's heat energy that is responsible for occurring winds driving the water cycle. Now, this is the water cycle. We have discussed about the water cycle last year, right? So, what are the steps of the water cycle? Look at this one. You all know during the daytime. Now, these are reservoirs, tanks, right? Different water bodies present uh, on the earth's surface. Then what happens during the daytime? Because of the sun's heat, the water evaporates. Right now, this is the evaporation of water. Let's write this is evaporation. 
the step is known as evaporation. 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 Right? So this evaporated water, which means the liquid water turns into water vapor. So in the upper atmosphere, what happens? This water vapor turns into clouds, which means this water vapor condenses and clouds are formed. So this process is known as condensation. So is this the only way where the atmosphere gets water vapor? No. Now basically by evaporation of water in the water bodies, the atmosphere gets water vapor. There's another way here, right? Look at the picture. You all know during the daytime, the plant body gets heated up. Therefore, the water present in the plant leaves also turns into water vapor and given to the atmosphere. This process is known as transpiration, right? This process is known as transpiration. Transpiration. Right? So because of evaporation and transpiration, the water vapor is given to the atmosphere. So in the atmosphere, what happens? This water vapor becomes water droplets making the clouds and this process is known as condensation. When more and more water droplets are collected in the clouds at one point, these water droplets will come back to the earth as rain and this step is known as Precipitation. Precipitation. Right, children? So, when due to rain, you all know that the surface water, the water runs through the surface and finally they go back to the water bodies. This step is known as collection. Right? So, collection, some of the water will be absorbed by the soil and the water in the soil will be again absorbed by the plants and this process is known as absorption. Right? So again water is collected in the water bodies during the daytime mostly they get evaporated and from the water absorbed by the plants during the daytime when the plant body gets heated up due to transpiration water vapors given to the atmosphere Again, due to condensation, clouds will fall. Again, due to precipitation, rains will fall. And again, this process or the cycle continues. Right? So, what about heat, children? Now, heat contributes in this cycle a lot. Look at this one. Because of the sun's heat, evaporation takes place. Because of the sun's heat, transpiration takes place. Right? If the temperature or heat is less, what will happen to the transpiration rate? Reduces. At the same time, if the heat is less, the plant bodies will not get heated up that much. In that case, water vapor will not be given to the atmosphere. If the water atmosphere does not contain water vapor, what will happen? The cloud formation will be less. Right, children? If the cloud formation is less, the precipitation or rainfall also will be less. So now you all know how important this heat energy is in order to carry out this water cycle. Right children, to maintain the water cycle, sun's heat is very, very important. Right? So it is heat energy that is responsible for occurring winds, driving the water cycle and drying clothes and so on. Not only to dry clothes, you all know, uh, most of the time we use solar heat to dry clothes and dry our other food items and all. So you all can understand how important is this heat energy now towards the environment and for us as well. Right children, we'll move on to the next. So list out five occasions where heat energy is used. Now this is very easy for you all. Why do we need heat energy, right? Day-to-day -day life, we need heat energy, right? To cook food, number one. 
to cook food we have to provide heat to the pots right in that case to cook food what is to heat water to boil water so you all can write write this list without my help okay to heat water what else children to dry clothes to dry clothes to iron clothes to iron clothes also we need heat energy right these are only some examples to cook food to heat water to dry clothes to iron clothes you can write the other examples as well right look at your home environment and you will be able to find some more examples for this list too right children so i hope you understood well about the heat energy and its uses as well we will move on to the next now right children so the last type of energy or the last form of energy we are going to learn in this lesson is chemical energy what is the meaning of chemical energy there are so many chemical substances some of them are solid some of them are liquids and some are gases so all these chemical substances contain a certain type of energy and the energy contained in these chemical substances is known as chemical energy right so chemicals can exist as solids liquids or gases right the large amount of energy stored in most chemicals so energy stored in chemicals is known as chemical energy right so chemical energy is also used in our day to day life especially you all know that in our day to day lives we have to use different types of fuels did you know that the type of energy stored in fuels is also chemical energy and at the same time when we eat food it gives us energy to run to walk to play as well right so when we eat food the food contains energy as chemical energy too right children we we'll move on to the next we have an activity to do here understanding more about chemical energy right so what are the things we need let's write we need a candle and we need a box of matches a box of matches and we need dilute hydrochloric acid right dilute hydrochloric acid and we need a piece of magnesium magnesium is a type of metal right a piece of magnesium and finally we need a test tube a candle a box of matches dilute hydrochloric acid a piece of magnesium and a test tube how to do this right light the candle and fix it on the table and you have to observe you are going to observe how it melts right and at the same time when you light the candle because of the candle wax you can obtain the flame right candle wax is a type of a fuel right observe it for a few minutes and note down the observations put the piece of magnesium ribbon into the test tube with dilute hydrochloric acid so first you have to take a little amount of the dilute hydrochloric acid to the test tube and you have to take a small piece of the magnesium it's a metal as i mentioned you all earlier and you have to put this piece of magnesium to the test tube with dilute hydrochloric acid then you have to observe what happens right note down the observations we will do this activity now right children we are going to do this activity to understand more about chemical energy look what i have here here i have a candle right and here i have a metal called magnesium look at this this is magnesium 
magnesium is a metal right here i have dilute hydrochloric acid a colorless acid right so what i am going to do with these things children first of all i am going to light a matchstick and i am going to light the candle right so what happens children you all can see how the candle burns okay children so when we consider the candle this candle is made up of chemical substances okay candle is made up of paraffin wax paraffin wax is a type of fuel so what happens when we light this candle because this wax is a kind of fuel it burns right children so here when we consider these type of fuels what is the type of energy contained in these type of fuels children that is chemical energy okay children not only this even the matchstick contains chemical energy because of the chemical reactions we can light this okay children so even when we consider dry cells dry cells also have chemical energy you all know now because of the chemical energy or chemical substances present inside the dry cells we can generate electricity right children so in every fuel the energy contained is the chemical energy right children okay now i'm going to take some of these hydrochloric acids to this test tube and then i'm going to put some pieces of magnesium to this test tube with hydrochloric acid observe what happens children can you see tiny air bubbles observe carefully you can see tiny air bubbles and you can see if you observe carefully you can see this magnesium metal dissolves reacts with this acid and it dissolves okay and if you observe carefully you can see a gas is evolved from this place right so when i touch this test tube i can feel that it's warmer than before okay so all these things are now this here uh, evolving a gas you all can see the reaction here production of gas bubbles right uh, change of temperature these all are actually evidence for chemical reactions right children so because of the chemical reactions take place we can see all these changes okay children so these type of changes are possible because there is a certain energy is contained in chemical substances and this energy is known as chemical energy so when we consider this magnesium and the acid the hydrochloric acid and even the candle it's a type of fuel present in the matchsticks and even in the dry cells chemical substances present so this chemical substances to chemical energy right children so you all observed what happened so what are the activities we did in the lab so we had to light the candle and we lighted it and we observed we saw that it was melting right so when you consider the candle wax it's considered as a fuel because by burning fuel we can obtain heat energy here so the second one when we put a piece of magnesium to the test tube with hydrochloric acid what happened children you all saw that air bubbles form a gas is produced a gas evolved and air bubbles also formed then finally what happens that little piece of magnesium dissolves in the acid why does that happen children all these things happen as a result of chemical reactions right in order to in order for these chemical reactions to happen energy is provided by the chemical substances and this energy is known as chemical energy right let's write this observation the candle or the wax melts
these of magnesium reacts with the acid giving out right acid gas is released right children okay so the conclusion chemical reactions take place due to the energy released by chemical substances. Right children, the above chemical reactions take place due to the energy released by chemical substances. The energy released by chemical substances is known as chemical energy, right? Right. The candle, dilute hydrochloric acid, the piece of magnesium ribbon are all chemical substances, right? There are chemical substances in the dry cells also. So you all know that there are different methods of generating electricity. One such method is using chemical substances. They are what happens? Chemical energy present in that chemical substances converted to electrical energy, right? Okay. So what is released in the above activity is the energy stored in chemicals or chemical substances, right? Right. We have an assignment here. Write down the instances where chemical energy converts to other forms of energy. So before we do this, we will think of what are the things with the chemical energy. So I told you all, all the chemical substances contain chemical energy, right? And at the same time, I told you all, food contains chemical energy. Fuels contain chemical energy. So we will write some of those examples. We will write... Uh, child running the child running so running is an activity which needs energy where does the child gets energy from by eating food so food contains energy what type of energy is contained in food chemical energy so when he runs what happens the chemical energy is converted to what is the energy children Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the type of the energy present in moving objects, right? Let's write a child running. Energy conversion takes place chemical energy. In brackets, let's write in food. Is converted to Kinetic energy. Right, children. Let's write another example. Burning firewood. Burning firewood. There, what is the energy transformation? So, firewood is a type of solid fuel. So, all the fuels contain chemical energy. They are what happens? The chemical energy is converted. So, when you burn firewood, chemical energy is converted to thermal or heat energy. Right? Chemical energy is converted to heat energy. We'll write one more thing. We can consider about the dry cell. Dry cell is used to generate electricity. 
So they are what happens? Dry cells also contain chemical substances. So chemical energy is converted to electrical energy there, right? Okay. Generating electricity using chemical cells or dry cells chemical cells they are also chemical energy is converted this time to electrical energy right children so child running Chemical energy is converted to kinetic energy. Burning firewood, chemical energy present in firewood is converted to heat energy, right? Light energy is also right, okay? Because when you burn something, light energy is also produced. Plus light energy. Right? Generating electricity using chemical cells. They are the chemical energy present in the chemical substances in the cells converted to electrical energy. So you can go with more examples here, right? Okay. We'll go through this one too. It is the chemical energy that is stored in food, kerosene oil and fuels like firewood, firecrackers as well because in order to make firecrackers, gunpowder like chemical substances are used right and matchsticks it's also the chemical energy that is stored in destructive objects such as bombs right so chemical energy can be used in both good and bad ways it means right so the energy transformation that occurs in a dry cell is given you already wrote it even under this assignment here generating electricity using chemical cells so dry cell is a type of chemical cells right so chemical energy is converted to electrical energy right let's write chemical energy is converted to electrical energy electrical energy right children so we have completed the chemical energy as well there are more forms of energy other than those we have studied so far so what are the forms of energy that we studied in this lesson children so we studied about kinetic energy potential energy electrical energy light energy, sound energy, heat energy and chemical energy and we learned how to use them in different instances too and now we know that those forms of energies can be used to do work because they have energy contained, right? So they may be considered in the future. There are other types of energy too. We are going to learn them in the upper grades. So we have completed the lesson. Shall we go see the summary to see what we have done in this lesson so far? Right. Energy is necessary to do work. Now we know that to do something, do even a small work, we need energy. Right. There are various forms of energy which are utilized to do various types of work. Some of them are mechanical energy. Do you remember? Two types of energies are considered as mechanical energy together. What are they? Potential energy and kinetic energy, right? So potential and kinetic energy. Electrical energy, light energy, heat energy, sound energy and chemical energy, right? Conversion of one form of energy to another form is called energy transformation. We learn that all the time whenever we use 
one type of energy we always keep in on transforming into a different other type right most of the appliances we use work by various forms of energy one form of energy is transformed to another forms during the operation of various appliances so one type of energy is always transformed to another type or maybe several types of energy and this is known as transformation of energy or energy conversion so we have completed the entire lesson now now in the next chapter we are going to discuss the exercise so apart from the exercise given in the textbook we are going to do some additional exercise as well so before you watch the next chapter you all have to do all the exercises all by yourselves so that you can check whether you understood the lesson or not to watch these important lessons subscribe to dp education's youtube channel right now click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.